Can you talk about Kitab Sulaym ibn Qais al-Hilali, given that it's a primary source of information about the crimes committed against Lady Fatima? How authentic or reliable is it? Very, very briefly, I don't want to get into this, but Kitab Sulaym ibn Qais al-Hilali, who was a companion of Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salatu wasalam, is a highly, highly reliable book. Uh, the book itself is deemed reliable. Al-Kafi by uh, Shaykh al-Islam al-Kulayni reports traditions from Kitab Sulaym. So it's, it's, it's as reliable as any book could get. Uh, Shaykh al-Tusi, Shaykh al-Ta'ifa reports from Kitab Sulaym. And other scholars obviously who came, who came after them also report traditions from this book. The problem they have with this book is that it's a highly nuanced and detailed account of the events that transpired after the death of the Holy Prophet Because it contains damning evidence, because the book exposes their lies and their hypocrisy, because this book sets the record straight as far as what happened to Fatima, what happened to Ali ibn Abi Talib, that's why they have a problem with it. As far as the Shia scholarly community is concerned, as I said, there are some criticisms about some of the points mentioned in the book, but that's only because no book is perfect other than the Holy Quran. Every other book can be subjected to scrutiny. We don't have a problem with that whatsoever. However, the, the main themes of Kitab Sulaym are reliable because not only is the book itself deemed reliable by our early scholars, but, it, but the themes of that book are corroborated and supported by other references and other sources. Yeah, you can check it out. You can check it out. So you can spend millions on a video form. Let's see if you can provide say sanad for it. <laughs> so, so sahih sanad for it is, is the, the real problematic part. As you can see, the office of Sayyidi Sistani has already announced <clears throat> that if you're looking for a sahih sanad for it, uh, or if you claim to have a Sahih Sanad for it, then you clearly have something that Seed Sistani himself doesn't have. Mm. Um, I think they would be very grateful to you if you were to provide them with, with uh, the, yeah. the Sahih Sanad because it does not exist. Um, what does exist uh, in the sources and what is generally used to, to prove the reliability of this whole narrative is statements from uh, Akhbari scholars or scholars whose methodology was Akhbari in the sense that they believed in blind and uncritical reliance on anything and everything that's attributed to the Ahlul Bayt in our sources. Mm. So there, there was this group of scholars, even in the past, and especially in the Safavid period of Akhbari dominance, uh, this was the mainstream uh, Shia position, that anything that's attributed to the, the Ahlul Bayt in the books uh, shouldn't be questioned or challenged. Uh, even if you don't understand it, don't reject it. That was the whole Akhbari yeah, that, uh, that, ide ideology. That, and that influence and mindset still exists in the minds of the Shia today. Unfortunately, despite the Usuli reform, the but Usuli you, reform... Using Usuli parlay to do the same thing. Exactly. No, this is... The, the, these are the residues of Akhbarism within Usulism. So Usuli yeah. Shia are still heavily influenced by the hangover... You know, they still haven't recovered from the hangover of the Safawid Akhbari era. Even though the Usuli reform is trying to do its best to counter the negative influences of the Akhbari mentality and the Akhbari mindset on today's Shia. But a lot of work still remains to be, to be done yes. in, this, in this regard, definitely. So the people who defend this narrative would say that Kitab Sulaim bin Qais has yeah. been de declared to be one of the most authentic and authoritative and reliable and trustworthy books in the Shia Hadith corpus. Said, let me pause you there for one second, it's just for the viewers. We have books like Al Kafi by Kulay um, Al the book Al Kafi by Kulaini, right? That's a book that Kulaini wrote. What's the difference between those kind of books and a book of Kitab Sulaim? Matlab one book we know someone wrote and we've got the book today we know Kulaini wrote it it's his book that then we check the chains in the book and we have authentication correct me if i'm wrong with kitab salim it's not like that it's a whole oh, yeah. it's a whole different system it's a whole a book has been done knuckle of and you don't check each chain in the book because the book is the chain could you explain that element because this is very important for the viewers right 
So, for example, a book like Al Kafi, okay, mm. after it was written, it was received by multiple narrators who took it from Sheikh Al Kulaini, and so it became textually stable pretty fast. Okay. Whereas the whole um, basis of uh, Kitab Sulaim is secret transmission. It's a book yeah, Hufiya, that's it's secret. Yeah, it's a book that Sulaim bin Qais al Hilali wrote and then secretly handed on to the next narrator. And so it's it's a single chain yeah. and uh, and no one else knows about it. Uh, the, the claim is that no one else knows about it other than the one who received it, and who uh, received it? from from Kitab Sulaim. So yeah, that we will we will uh, come to that when we look at the chain. But okay. for now, let's look at the book itself. Okay, good. Um, if if you come to the to our sources, as I mentioned, is that those who want to authenticate uh, Kitab Sulaim bin Qais al Hilali, what they will cite is the statement of a list of Akhbari scholars who don't aslan believe in any kind of rigorous uh, critical engagement uh, or rijali analysis of the chains of transmission for these kinds of books. So they will say, well, look, An Nu'mani, for example has authenticated Kitab Sulaim bin Qais, right? They will talk about Akhbari Safawid scholars like Al-Allama Muhammad Baqir al-Majlisi or even his father, Al-Allama Muhammad Taqi al-Majlisi, both of whom, both the Majlisis are big fans of Kitab Sulaim bin Qais and they will say that it's authentic and it's accepted by the Shia and it's accepted by the Sunnis and this and that, uh, when in reality, uh, forget about Sunnis, it's it's not even accepted fully by, by, by Shias. Um, they will also cite, for example, al muhaddith al-Nuri, or for example, a Sheikh Muhammad al-Hassan al-Hur al-Amili. These are all Akhbari scholars who regarded Kitab Sulaim bin Qais as authentic because its contents match their kind of imamology and their kind of ghulu-based understanding of, of things. So, but, but for today's usuli Shias, these are... Uh, scholarly authentications should not mean anything because these are the very same scholars who then also authenticate Tahrif al-Quran. You know, the hadith in Al-Kafi that there are that the original Quran had 17,000 verses. Yeah, these Akhbari scholars also authenticate that. So scholars who are authenticating a hadith about Tahrif, what's the value of their authentication? You can clearly see that these are scholars who whose methodology is a kind of blind reliance on whatever has been transmitted in the Shia Hadith corpus and whatever has been attributed to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt But within the Shia uh, tradition, when you look at scholars who had what we call Al-Hiss Al-Rijali Al-Mutatawwir or Al-Murhif, you know, they had a greater sense of Rijali discernment. They were more critical in al rijal If you come to these kinds of scholars, you will see that they have been very upfront about uh, their view about this book. Uh, 